How's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. All right. Okay. So there's still a pandemic going on. We are all still stuck inside, at least in the lovely land of the UK. So um, what have I been doing alongside all of that lovely, lovely editing you guys know that I'm definitely doing right now because I'm talking so much about the uh, Don't Make Sun books. Um, well, I'm reading and I'm reviewing um, books by indie authors. <laughs> so um, I think I kind of briefly mentioned this before and I've definitely mentioned um, that my plan this year has been, or one of my New Year's revolutions this year, was to try and show more support for indie creators. Um, and then the pandemic happened, so like the, the supporting of like indie theatre and indie arts hasn't necessarily panned out quite yet, um, but that hasn't stopped me from supporting the community that I'm most <laughs> most close to, um, which is the, the, uh, in the authors. Um, so, um, any of you who have Goodreads know that Goodreads set a challenge, uh, for people, like an optional challenge for people at the beginning of the year, to sort of like say how many books that they are planning to sort of read and to see if, you know, you can make it. I'd set mine at 10 because last few years I haven't read a huge number of books. Um, that's been for, for lots of different reasons. Um, as, as a lot of you know, last year, a lot of the year was taken up by the fact that I became a homeowner and I had like decorating and stuff like that to sort out. So um, that was a big reason why I wasn't reading a huge amount last year. Um, the year before that, uh, as a lot of you know, my health wasn't exactly great, uh, so that was a, a, a huge reason why I wasn't reading so much then. Um, but this year, I'm kind of like, well, let's let's see if I can do a little bit better. I'm a writer; I really should be reading a little bit more. Um, so, yeah, I, I set myself a challenge of ten, just to sort of try and get myself back into the swing of it. Um, I didn't actually read anything in January uh, or February. <laughs> January was because I was so exhausted from the short turnaround of moving Hyena Boy and Echo onto Kindle Direct, um, as well as retiring the other books that I want to sort of work on and stuff like that. Uh, February is, is, is such a short month and it just sort of flew by before I knew it. March uh, was literally when I started, and I only started like on my birthday. That's the first the first day that I sat down to read this year. Um, and since then, I have managed to get my my way through eight books. Um, and you know, bearing in mind that is less than a month, so that is sort of almost averaging two books a week, which is actually very good when you consider the fact that the other thing that is taking up a lot of my time at the moment is editing so I'm not I'm trying not to um, read on the days that I'm editing so that I can get as much editing done as possible and then my break from the editing is to to watch stuff so that my brain isn't just completely overloaded with words <laughs> you know you, you do have to sort of like take a break especially because um the way I'm reading these books at the moment is through my Kindle, so it's also spending a lot of time staring at screens, which is, you know, not necessarily the best thing for you, although I'm also then watching stuff. Staring at words on screen. <laughs> um, anyway, so, yeah, I've, I've managed to get through eight books so far since the, uh, since the lockdown started, um, which is... is Surprise! It surprised me quite a lot, um, and the, the books have been of various lengths as well. They've been of various genres. Um, technically, they've all been indie. Um, I mean, I'm I'm not sure how much I can count the FNAF book as being indie, <laughs> considering that was the first one that I read. Um, I would like to make the argument that technically it is. It has been 
independently published, I believe. I don't think it's... Where is it? I don't know. Um, I, I mean, it's definitely by, you know, it's definitely a lesser-known writer. It's definitely a lesser-known thing, so it's not necessarily mainstream. So I'm going to... I'm going to count it as being pseudo-indie, uh, but everything else, uh, the, the other seven books have all definitely 100% been indie books by indie authors um, of varying genres, and, and that's one of the things I'm trying to aim for with the whole reading and reviewing other people's work, is to read from as many different genres as possible. Um, now, I know there's a bit of a thing where if you write a certain type of story then you should only read within that genre to kind of help and I, I think that's a load of rubbish really um I think it, it strengthens your ability as a storyteller um if you read across different genres if you don't sort of like focus and kind of go yes I only write I, I'm a fantasy writer therefore everything I read must be fantasy and my writing must be 100% fantasy no, I'm a fantasy writer that loves crossing genres. Um, I'm a fantasy writer that loves sort of um, exploring different things and coming at things from a slightly different angle when I can. I might not necessarily be the best at doing that, but I like to try. I like to sort of absorb lots of different things and, and you know, find a way of uh, allowing those experiences to enhance my writing. So... Um, Writing lots, uh, reading from lots of different genres is is absolutely wonderful. I have to admit, most of them have had some elements of fantasy in them, um, but not all have. Um, and you know, it, it's been it's been a fun journey so far. Um, and you know, I've I've even taken some time to read books which are filled with short stories. Um, I'm rubbish at writing short stories. Like anybody who can write a short story. Seriously, I have no idea how you do it. <laughs> I'm I'm so bad at the short story format. It is legitimately a completely different set of skills to the set of skills that I have to write short stories that are compelling and interesting. And you, you get to the end of and you're like, ah, that, that was really good. Why, why has it ended? <laughs> I, I want to walk with you. Um, but at the same time feel like really satisfying um and i i've read so far i've read two collections of short stories amongst all of the the things that i've read and they've both been different and really good in their own sort of ways um and i'm like seriously if you can write a short story um as i said a couple of the, the other books i've read actually most of the other books i've read so far have been fantasy but that's not necessarily been uh an intentional thing <laughs> i mean the shorts the short stories definitely one of the collections of the short stories wasn't fantasy it was definitely very straight fiction the other one i'm also fairly sure was uh like for 90 percent most part straight fiction um there might have been a couple of more fantasy ones and I, I don't know, I've, I've read so many things over the last four weeks. <laughs> it's hard to keep straight where the fantasy elements were and what came into what. Um, but I know all like, the major stories have either had fantasy elements or they've um, been fantasy stories in and of themselves. Um, but they've all, they've all done different things with it. Um, and they've all taken it in, in slightly different ways. Um, one of my favourite ones, basically... Pride and Prejudice with Fantasy Elements, um, which was absolutely great. Because, um, I, I mean, I know there's a whole uh, the Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, and it, it wasn't along that sort of vein. It was much more sedate than that. And I've not, I've not read that and I've not seen that movie, but it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't taking it from a slightly comedic angle, which I know that is supposed to be. It was taking it from a more... Um, more period angle I'd, I, I'd, I'd kind of argue it, it felt very in keeping with the time it didn't have like this big bombastic sort of storyline to it it was nice and sedate it was easy to follow it was it was you know really intriguing kind of narrative and like the fantasy elements were woven in so well <laughs> I'm like yeah if I were able to do a period piece I, I'd never get it quite as good as that I would either go too far on the fantasy end of the scale um or I would be too unrealistic with the period stuff. It, it, it does take a lot of work. And I know that from writing the Never Rating books. 
just how hard it is to make sure your work of, of fantasy fiction is set correctly within its time period. Um, I mean, I do work so hard at making sure I, I don't, like, break the time period for the narration books. So, you know, I, anybody who can, who can go even further back in time than that. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it, that, that's I, definitely one of the favorite, one of my like favorites uh, for what I've read um, so far, which, uh, which is great. <laughs> Um, and then another one of the fantasy ones, which again, the fantasy elements were, you know, overt. They were sort of like, they, they kind of built and built and built as the story went on. Um, so like the, the, the period one, I, I should name these. Okay. So Death Takes a Holiday at Temberley. <laughs> I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, that's the, the period one where the fantasy element remains the same consistency all the way through. Um, and then Matriarch, which is the the other one with the, the sort of building fantasy elements. So it sort of starts off where you, you kind of get a taste of it, and then it builds and it builds and it builds and it builds towards the 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 end of the book, which, by the way, is brilliant. Um, well worth the time to read to get to that point to sort of kind of go, oh wow. wow. Um, the thing that book did so well with all with all its twists. So many twists. Um, I, because I'm a writer, and I, I do, I try so hard to switch my brain off when I'm enjoying stories that other people have created, whether that's um, TV or film, or whether that's reading. I try to switch off the part of my brain which is constantly kind of trying to second guess everything so that I can enjoy the story for what it is. But of course, I, I can't completely switch it off. Um, Matriarch was one of those stories where I kept thinking to myself, okay, this this must be where it's going next. It has to be. Um, and then it would go in a completely different direction. And I was like, that makes sense. But I don't know. I didn't see it coming. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it, it's one of those kind of, yeah, it, it's been, it, it's been a, a fun time sort of reading all of these different books and, uh, coming across all these like very, very different, very different stories and very different sort of uh, ways of, of um, telling a story. And then it's just been, it's just been really fun. <laughs> it's been really fun. And I plan to continue uh, reading Indy um, at least one or two books a week for as long as the quarantine goes on for. Um, and once the quarantine stops, probably will stop start slowing down my reading a little bit because I'm not going to have the same amount of time that I've got right now just to sort of go okay I can spend an entire day reading and not worry too much I'm in between edits at the moment I need to take a day off let's read um is that that's the thing I, I literally spend the entire day just reading get through a book <laughs> my reading speed is amazing <laughs> Like, all, all of my editing has made my reading speed absolutely crazy, um, like, amazingly crazy. And I, I know I'm using, like, the voice reader to help um, to help with that a lot. And to, to be fair, the voice reader kind of speeds you up and slows you down at the same time. Um, but, you know, I, I can get through... Um, I, I can get through the the, the two Dominic Sun books really quickly and, and yeah my reading speed is is pretty pretty amazing considering I've always considered myself a really sluggish reader. <laughs> I've always been like, nah I'm a really I'm a really slowly reader, I'm a really laborious reader. Um it takes me a while to get through things. No, no, I've been lying to myself. I'm actually a fairly fast reader. <laughs> Um, yeah, I've, I've been enjoying this, this situation at the moment, um, and it, I've just been reading so many interesting things that, you know, it, it's definitely been, it's definitely been worth it. Um, I know there are a, a quite a few more books left on my reading list, um, I mean, and as some of them are not fantasy, um, I'm fairly sure some of them are not fantasy. But the thing is, is that I'm selecting my books um via the stuff that I'm seeing on on Twitter and and stuff like that so I'm not 
worrying too much about the genre. Um, I'm just sort of like going, oh, that looks like an interesting, uh, a lot of the time it's, oh, that looks like an interesting cover, or, oh, I've seen that book floating around a few times now, I'm going to, I'm going to check it out. Um, I'm not necessarily reading the descriptions or like what genre it is or stuff like that. I'm just kind of like going, I'm just going to add that to, to my reading list. And then, because the, the thing is, the thing is, is I'm one of those people, and this, this is the thing that I find, um, uh, if I look too much into what I'm going to start reading or watching, um, I find that I'm not in the mood for it. Whereas if I kind of go, oh, that's an interesting cover, let's see, let's see what that's about, or, oh, I've, I've seen that floating around a few times, let's see that, what that's about, I'm more likely to, um, to start actually reading or watching it um, than I would if I were to sort of, like, sit there and, and kind of read what it's supposed to be about. <laughs> um, and, that, and that purely comes down to... Um, really comes down to the fact that I'm a, a fairly indecisive person so if, if I have to sort of spend time sort of thinking and, and deciding about things then I kind of stop myself from making a decision kind of that simple really um so I always find it's kind of easier um and better for me um if I sort of just randomly randomly select something and kind of go, okay, that's what I'm going to be reading today, or, you know, uh, this is my list of books, okay, that's the next one, I'll, I'll start reading that one, um, rather than to spending time thinking about it too much, just get in there and read. <laughs> and I think that's one of the reasons why I end up, then end up being quite pleasantly surprised by what I'm reading, and also probably why I've ended up reading so many fantasy things, uh, and I've been trying to sort of mix up the genres a little bit more because like I said it's just been that happens to be okay that that's the cover I'm choosing today let's go with that one <laughs> um and at the same time you know some of the some of the authors that I have read who do have more than one book their other book has uh slipped its way into my list and it's kind of like do, do I read that one now, or do I read one by somebody else first, just that, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. It, it, it's one of those where it's like, I will make a decision when, I, I'll basically just click whichever, whichever cover I fancy. <laughs> That's a great thing about doing it through um, Kindle, is like on your main Kindle screen, you just have the image of the of the cover, so you're not um, you're not having to turn the book over to read what the book's about like you would if the book was on your bookshelf. You're just selecting the image um, from the little list of images on the homepage, and then you're going from there. So whatever I choose to read next will be selected by that, and then I will review it because that's the other thing. That's the other thing. That's the big important thing. Um, as I've said, I'm trying very hard at the moment to be supporting indie, and the best, best way to support any indie creator whatsoever is to review. Whether it's to review their, their art, to review their book, to review um, their film, because I, I know there are indie films out there, the best thing you can do is review. Um, because reviews help let other people who come to look at their, um, to, you know, come who might be interested in getting their book, decide whether or not they, or book or art or whatever else, to decide whether or not they are going to actually get it. And, uh, you know, reviews or something are really hard to generate. Um, because uh, a lot of normal consumers of, of, you know, various things don't think about reviewing because they're like, well, you know, it doesn't make a difference, but it does. <laughs> and when people realise it makes a difference, then, you know, maybe people will start reviewing more. But, um, yeah, no, it, it's it's one of those things, it's sort of like, it's such a simple way of supporting indie creators. And, you know, I, I always try when I'm sort of formulating a review to incorporate something to let the, let the author know that I have actually read the book. <laughs> And I'm saying that because um, I got a review on Authors Den once, 
where it was very clear the person had not read past the first few pages, like so, so clear that they had not read past the first few pages because they completely missed the, the you know, the actual point of the book. <laughs> and like, you, you, you could tell it from just one sentence that they didn't read that far into the book because, you know, they, they, it was like, what? Seriously, what? Um, that you clearly have not read my book. Um, so yeah, one of the things I do try to do when I'm, I'm writing the reviews is to put something in, some detail in, um, to, to kind of let the, the author know that I have made it through their book. <laughs> because, <laughs> you, know, I, I, you know, I'm doing it, you know, genuinely. I'm genuinely reviewing their book. I genuinely enjoyed their book. I'm you know, giving a genuine review to their book. I want to show them you know, I, I've appreciated that, that they have written this and that they've taken the time to sort of do it by, you know, showing that I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't know how well I do it each time. Um, some are easier to do than others. Um, like when, when it was a collection of short stories, it's kind of like, oh, I need to make sure I reference something like from, from various different things and to make sure it's, it's clear that I've definitely, definitely read these short stories and you know there are a lot of them and you, you kind of get to a point where you're like I don't necessarily remember all of these short stories that I've read but at the same time like the short stories ones it's amazing it's like so amazing like some will just like stick in your head for days um like I think it's been over over a week since I read like the first of those short story ones and then like some of them are just like just like there <laughs> I'm like ooh. Ooh, I'm still getting a little bit of a ooh from from those. So um, yeah, that's that that's a thing, and and you know it's you know it's a small thing, you know it's a small thing to do, and it's a small thing to make sure that you you know acknowledge that you have taken the time to truly appreciate this by showing you taking the time to truly appreciate it <laughs> by reviewing in in a way that you know is is um, true to how you feel about it and, you know, true to, true to your own thoughts. And as I said, me personally, I always like to try and incorporate a detail to just to sort of show that I have indeed read the book. <laughs> Even if that's not always easy. <laughs> so sometimes it's not necessarily the easiest thing in the world to, to work out how you show that. Um, anyway. This is getting very bubbly and rambly and a little bit all over the place and um, I hope I kind of got my thing across that I've been enjoying myself reading indie recently and I encourage anybody who's watching to also read indie, says the indie author with indie books out there <laughs> in desperate need of reviews. <laughs> I have, I have to get the selfish self-promotion in there somewhere. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. I hope it's kind of made you interested in going out there and reading some indie books, um, whether they're the, ones, the, the two that I've name-dropped or, or otherwise. I really should name-drop the authors as well, but I'm so bad at remembering full names. So... <laughs> So I'm, I, I, I apologise, um, I don't want to get like their last names wrong, um, even though, because they are people that I do follow on Twitter, so I know, I know them by their, like, their Twitter handles, and, um, like, that, that's, you know, and I know them by their first names, um, so I don't actually remember what their full names are, so, um, hopefully, you know, you guys will be able to find them from the time we at least be able to I might I might like link um to a few books in fact that's what I'll do I'll link to a few books by other indie authors <laughs> in the comments um ones that I have read and reviewed that you know I would thoroughly recommend to people so that's what I'll do I'll link to them in the comments and then you guys can find them there and then I won't make pe mistakes with people's names and I you will yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'll be linking them to the right things. Um, all right, okay. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. I hope you're going to check out those links in my description and support these wonderful indie authors. Um, and I will see you guys next time. See ya. <laughs>
you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya!